Behind me, I have my beloved Gaja right here that I've had for less than half a year and we're gonna be packing it up into this box right here and I'll kind of briefly talk about it. To kind of backtrack, I went through a few espresso machines before this, before I decided I kind of wanted to go into the hobby and art of espresso. So I had the, I started with an espresso. Well, before that, I actually had a mocha pot. I remember 10 years ago, I had a mocha pot. I had a broken handle, so I had to use like a towel to always handle it. That was kind of my espresso when we first got married. I had a mocha pot, a coffee machine. Like I always had a coffee machine, I had Keurigs. Went on to the Nespresso. From the Nespresso, I got a Cafe Affetto, which I still have. There's issues with that, but that's like a whole different video. And then from there, I had a Casa Brews that was sent to me. It's kind of like Breville, but not really because Breville, I would say they're very good quality machines and they made a name for themselves. Casa Brews is not bad. If you have good quality beans and you're not really like a coffee snob where you're very particular about input and output, but you're just looking more so for to make sure it's within the pressure range and you're getting those beautiful golden rat tails coming out of the spout then i feel like you will like the casa brews i enjoyed it i ended up gifting it to my sister and giving it to her when we stayed with her because she didn't have she was using a curry and i was like no this is not it and she really liked she still uses it she loves the casa brew she still uses it enjoys it and gives her good espresso it's exactly what she's looking for so once i gave that to her i was kind of in the market looking for to upgrade and i wanted to enter the world of espresso so i went found the espresso thread on reddit i spent like a whole week just reading through all the information at first it was so overwhelming there's so much information on there that i was like what do these terms even mean it was just like so much information um but one thing that i realized is that when it comes to the price range that i was willing to spend i didn't want to go over a thousand dollars for both espresso machine plus a grinder and a lot of people would say get a grinder separately instead of having a built-in grinder because the built-in grinders are not a, always the best quality so i decided to invest in a grinder something that i can hopefully keep for the rest of my life i got a eureka specialita right there and i do have i, I changed the hopper on it i have like a one of those i changed it so i'll need to know um so that was like 650 and then i had like up to $500 that I wanted to spend on an espresso machine. Reading through the threads, people were recommending either the Breville Bambino Plus or the Gadget Classic. So I decided to go for the Gadget Classic and I got the new 2023 model in September of last year, kind of like as a little anniversary gift to myself. And everything is fine, love it, it's beautiful, she's gorgeous. This combo right here I think is absolutely gorgeous. The white and the white, I love white, I love white machines, so it's everything that I was looking for. Because you're doing school by the way. I was really getting to learn espresso, I feel like I'm really comfortable with it now and it's kind of like a easy workflow for me. Um, when it comes to like $3,000 machines, they have all these different knobs and stuff. For me, that's still a little bit foreign. So I liked having this to kind of dip my toes into that world of espresso. Um, but then like a week or two ago, I started seeing posts on the espresso Reddit thread about flakes in people's cups and then like the boiler peeling. And I was like, what is going on? What are all these posts? They call it boiler gate. The new 2023 models have a new coated boiler. When I was purchasing the Gaja, I didn't pay much mind to it because at the time I really didn't know too much about machines. I was just dipping my toes into like dual boiler, single boiler, let alone reading about all these little descriptions, descriptions and stuff. So for me, I didn't really pay much mind to it. The fact that I had a coated boiler, I didn't really know that boilers came coated brass, uncoated aluminum. Like that was not knowledge that I was familiar with. So I didn't pay much mind to it, but for the 2023 Classic Evo Pros, they went from their, I believe, aluminum boiler to this coated boiler. And what ended up happening is that they claimed that a certain batch of these coated boilers uh, experienced were defective. They were defective and they ended up peeling. People took apart their machines, they saw it with their own eyes. It wasn't so much coming through the espresso, but through the steam wand when you were pouring hot water. And I went on, turned on my hot water, and this is a photo that I have here of the black flakes. So a lot of the times it's not as prominent, but the fact that I still see black flakes, for me, I think people will feel a certain type of way. You either don't care and you move on with your life. Some people opted for returns if they were within the return period. For some people, they asked for a new uncoated boiler. If you know how to, I'm not trying to change the boiler on the machine. 
we're not doing that. Um, so I reached out to, I bought it through Whole Latte Love and I asked them if I can get store credit because I don't want to deal with this machine, period. I've completely lost trust in those boilers, so I don't really want to deal with the new boilers at all. That's kind of where I'm at. Everybody has a different stance. You do whatever you're comfortable with. Do not judge other people for their decisions. Thank you very much. Love that. Love not judging other people for their decisions. So I asked them if I can get store credit and they said yes. It's been a week, almost a week, so I haven't heard back from them yet. Hopefully they're not gonna like flake on me. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not whole latte, it's not whole latte loves fault. I feel like their customer service was doing a really good job. They probably had so many tickets and inquiries that I almost feel bad that people had that they had to deal with this, but it's a defective product. You're paying for a product to work properly. You want it to be working as it should. The fact that it's flaking means it's a defective product. For me, it's just principle, and I just completely lost trust in these boilers. So as much as she is beautiful, she has got to go. She has betrayed us. There she is. I'm going to put her away. I'm going to drain the water, get the water out of the boiler, which I read the best method to do that is to get it to steam temp, and then turn it off, unplug it, put it over a sink and let the steam wand run to get all that water as it's tilted out of the boiler. So that's what I plan to do once I kind of really get all the water out manually this way. But I haven't had my coffee yet, it's like 11 in the morning, so I wanna make myself a coffee. This is all that I have right now. I mean, I do have pour over actually, and I love pour over. I have these little filters here, and I've been loving pour over as well. I don't know, I feel like I really missed the richness of espresso. I'm definitely like an espresso kind of gal where I, I love milk-based espresso drinks, but still, I miss my espresso. And I know this is not a true espresso because it can't create the same amount of pressure as an espresso machine, but it still gives you, I feel like, a much richer type of taste. Depending on how you make it, there are so many different methods that I've watched videos online, and I feel like there's like a lot of conflicting advice on how to use it. I've seen people show where they like, kind of pre-infuse it and wet the grounds and then the comments will be like my Italian grandmother is rolling in her grave <laughs> and I'm like the comments are just so hilarious so I heard that these are like a staple in Italian households so if you're like an OG and you grew up with this then you probably make some bomb mocha pot I'm just going based off of kind of like what I've tried and what I've seen online so what I'm gonna do is get some boil some water and don't judge me do not judge me how I make my mocha pot I'm still kind of learning I have some fresh beans right here. I just got in from Trade. I have their subscription. And this one I actually really like. Once the coffee cooled down, I can really taste the dark cherry. But it has tasting notes of dark cherry, citrus orange, and dark chocolate. I really, really like this one. And I'm going to grind it to slightly more coarse than an espresso grind. I'm going to add water to the top of the steam. No, right below the steam valve. So you don't want the hot water to cover this little steam valve right here. And then I'm going to fill this up with espresso and I'm just gonna very gently kind of spread it out and then I'm gonna go ahead and place this on top and then because it's super hot since I have hot water in there you're gonna need a towel or like heat resistant gloves I've seen people use to screw it on nice and tight and I don't have any fancy plates or anything like that to put it on I just put it right on the stove top and I put it on like a medium low at first and then I personally open it to keep an eye on it and I keep it open until the end. I know some people keep it closed and wait for the steam. You do you. But once it starts to come out like in a slow steady stream, that's when I'll put it down to like low low. Right now it's at medium low. But once it starts to come out, I'll switch it to like as low as possible. There she goes. Why is this so light? Alright, and then I'm going to turn it off when it starts to sputter and run the base under cold water to stop it. I think I'm just gonna make this as like a coffee with half and half, just based off of the color. So I'm gonna pour some in my cute little heart mug here. And then, I feel like I should be able to, no, it might be too dark for coffee. I might have to dilute it with a little bit of water. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like just adding that little bit of hot water. Somebody might be cringing right now, but. Everybody likes things differently. All right, now that we got those few sips of coffee in, let's go ahead and say goodbye. Just out of curiosity, let me check out the steam valve and see what that looks like. Let me clean this cup out, make sure it is squeaky clean so there's like no black specks in here so people can't say that, oh, well, your cup was dirty. I mean, it does have some scratching on the bottom from whatever, but there's like no black specks in terms of coffee grounds or anything weird and now we're going straight here <gasps> yeah 
Yeah, we got a couple of black flakes, and they're not coffee ground black flakes. It's not as bad as the first time I did it. The first time I did it, I feel like it was literally looked like sediment, but they're like oddly shaped black flakes. Gaja, I'm a little disappointed in you for sure. And I think I'm mostly disappointed in them is because I always feel like they kind of try to gaslight users into saying that it is food safe. But food safe and food grade are two completely different categories. Gel food color, where that's food grade. Or like matcha powder, that's food grade. Where you can actually use it for cooking, for baking, and ingesting. The coating on this was not tested to be ingested. They approved the replacement of the machines saying that these new boilers are have been thoroughly tested i feel like there's just like a lot of almost like gaslighting going on and i'm like i don't trust you i don't trust you whole latte love on the other hand their customer service and me talking back and forth i feel like they have been very good let's hope they don't flake on me but i feel like whole latte love their customer service spoke volumes i haven't worked through gaja directly but whole latte love did send gaja's statement over and then just reading other people's experiences, I feel like I was I was kind of disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little disappointed in how they handled things. I feel like they could have they could have done a much better job. tape it up I kept the outer box as well just in case and she's gone that's it I do have another machine coming in on Saturday though little mini Casa Bruce I'll unbox that one just because as much as I love a smoke -a pot it doesn't create enough pressure to give me an espresso so I wanted something in the meantime it was like 140 bucks I'll share about that when it comes in but au revoir gaja since they're an Italian brand, I probably should have said ciao or arrivederci. I'm sorry. And now there's a sad little empty space waiting to be filled for the next one. Which, like I said, I did get a Casa Brews. There are a lot of brands within that price range on Amazon. Um, but I just wanted something simple that could froth milk. And I trust Casa Brews. I've used their other machine. I've worked with them. And I feel like they're a trustworthy brand, especially when it comes to customer service if you're dealing with anything. So that was kind of a big thing for me. And I like directly DM them. So I'm familiar with them. So I decided to go with Costa Bruce. They have like they have a few different models. I think like four or five at this point. But I decided to go with um one of the more simple ones. I'll show you guys when that one comes in. But yeah, I think I'm gonna finish the video here because otherwise I feel like it's already so long and a lot of talking. Just wanted to share putting away the gaja what's been going on with that and then i'll unbox and show you guys the casa brews i feel like that one is more accessible for a lot of people and it's something that a lot of people look for because not many people are real willing to deal with that and then the casa brews is also something my husband can finally use so i was the main coffee maker in the house which i don't mind but if my husband ever just randomly wants like a cup of coffee i feel like he can easily use the casa brews one because you just press the button as long as you put the grinds into the pour filter and stuff um, but you just press the button and kind of does everything for you don't have to worry about depressurizing it after or anything like that making sure you turn off the switches it automatically turns off by itself so definitely a lot more user friendly i'll share about that when it comes in but yep that's that thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you guys in future videos mm -hmm.